my name is Stephanie Miller. I run the Center of Excellence here in North America for SAP for Finance. And it's such a privilege to be here with you today. I'm, I'm going to share just a little bit around what I'm hearing from other like-minded finance and accounting colleagues. Um, I'm going to share a couple things around a survey that we did with CFOs to see if these same things resonate with you. And then I'm, I'm also going to talk about some SAP customers that are tackling these challenges. So um, I'll definitely take some questions along the way. I'm going to try to make this fun and entertaining and also engaging. Um, I was going to throw out beers to people who answered questions, but you stole that from me, so I can't do that now. So I'm just going to high five you if you answer questions. So just before we jump in, a little about me. So what's the center of excellence? What does that even mean? Um, you met Steve, my colleague. You guys, some of you have met Massimo as well. Um, so we run a team in North America. We help customers through their financial transformation journeys. And what's really fun about that is we get to take them along the journey and we get to hear and see how they do, right? So um, for example, I worked with this woman named Vicki at Treehouse Foods and she and I presented together. And it's really get fun to get to present with you all. And Vicki shared a story about um, pivoting Treehouse Foods during COVID. And she said that they had invested in a platform called Central Finance to get real-time profitability. And Treehouse Foods, if you don't know them, they sell um, a lot of the bottom shelf stuff at the grocery store, but then they also sell to you know, places like this, the, the, the muffins and condiments, they bring those things in. So they do a lot of things that maybe you don't know. Well, when they shut down schools and shut down businesses, Treehouse had to pivot overnight to be able to sell to the groceries. So they needed that insight. They couldn't wait till the month end closed. And so Vicki told this story at a conference about how SAP saved Treehouse Foods from going out of business during COVID. So when you get to be part of those types of stories, it just makes the job very, very fun. Um, I'm a Tampa Bay Lightning fan, and I see the NHL runs SAP, and I see the logos when I go to the hockey games, and I just have a lot of pride in the company. Um, I've been here for 18 years, um, actually joined with some of the people that are in the room today, so it's so fun to be back with Greg and Tom, some of the folks that I've worked with for 20 years. Um, the other thing I'll share about me is where I'm from. So this isn't as impressive here because we can like walk a couple blocks and see the same thing. Um, but this is a beach in Florida. It's in St. Pete. Anyone ever been to St. Pete? Tampa? It's a beautiful area. I live about a mile from here. I'm very, very blessed. And I have a three-year-old son. He loves the beach. He's recently discovered the sunset. And he says, Mommy, Mommy, let's go watch the sun go to sleep. I want to play in the sand. And so I love the beach. I love going with him. But oh my god, the sand. Right? Any beach fans in here? Right? The sand, it's everywhere and you know it. And you, you come home and you clean everything and then like two weeks later you clean your phone case and sand, again, more sand. So again, what does that have to do with modern finance, sand, right? So I think about the sand, it's everywhere. Data is everywhere, it's overwhelming, right? You, you think you have your hands on it and then you find more two weeks later. So there's massive, massive data explosion happening and I'm gonna use a little analogy to kind of explain really what this means. So if you think about data and how many things capture data, we all have at least three devices, four. I have a coffee machine that will reorder my coffee when the coffee grounds are out, right? There are so many things that capture this data. We just heard a story next door about ERP which is not ERP like you would think of ERP, but it's elephants, rhinoceroses, and people. And they have sensors on their necks, the elephants' necks, to track the elephants to see where they are so that poachers won't go after them, right? And they haven't had any poaching incidents since they're using SAP to save the elephants. So thank you, Greg, for that timely story because I fit it right in. So at the end of the day, there's this massive data explosion happening, and no wonder there's all these things that capture the data, right? In fact, they've come up with a new term to measure data, zettabyte. So I know what a byte, kilobyte, megabyte, even terabyte, gosh, terabytes was 1990 when the first terabyte database came out and they started doing data analysis. So we've been doing this for a long time, but zettabyte. So if you look at this chart, I'll read it to you guys because we're all drinking wine, right? <laughs> Cheers. So in 2020, there was approximately 47 zettabytes of data in the world. By 2035, this number is gonna jump to 2,000 zettabytes. By the way, what is a zettabyte? I had to look it up. Look, I work at a technology company and I didn't know what a zettabyte was. So I started doing some research. So remember my sand. This is a beautiful drilled in picture of sand. So let's assume for the, some, the sake of explaining what a zettabyte is, that one grain of sand equals one byte. All right, now does anybody recognize this? So when I was in college, I built a 386. 
I don't remember what that meant. I'm sure the number meant something at the time, but it was a 3D6 something, and I bought it all these parts, and I plugged in my floppy disk, and I saved my WordPerfect files, and all my homework on this little thing. So this held 80 kilobytes, which was about 80,000 bytes. So I looked up what 80,000 grains of sand would weigh. And coincidentally, it would fit in my kid's truck. So this is my son Cameron, he's adorable. And this is not beach sand, but whatever. It's about 11 pounds of sand in Cam's truck. So that's the floppy disk, right? So where are we now? Covering the Sahara Desert in sand. That's how much data is in the world today. Where will we be by 2024? Covering Africa in sand. So think about how fast the data is growing, right? We have all of this data sitting out there, and it get, keeps getting written and stored. Data is leaving this digital exhaust behind us that's gonna live long after we're gone. It starts when we're born, right? We share photos of our babies on the internet, and it starts creating this digital trail. Did you know we've made more data in the last two years than we have in the last like 3,000? There's so much data getting stored. But how do you make sense of it, right? How, it's like looking for a needle in the haystack. It's like trying to find one grain of sand. Oh, there's the answer to my profitability. It's that grain of sand. And who knows how to find it? It's this guy. <laughs> who, who in this room is this guy? <laughs> who knows this guy, <laughs> right? So, and this guy typically lives in finance, right, <laughs> typically. And, and at the end of the day, this person has so much power. And I am actually proud to say at SAP, I kind of am this guy. Like, I'm an accountant. I'm a former recovering accountant. <coughs> Excel is my favorite tool. You can rip it out of my cold dead hands. Now, fortunately, SAP has some analytical tools that make my job a little easier. But people can call Stephanie, tell me about my pipeline. Tell me about my pipeline gaps. What products are selling? And I do my thing, and I send it out. And people watch me, and how does she do it? So I have power. It's very fun to have power. <laughs> But what also happens if you're this guy? Anybody recognize this guy? What, do you remember, who is this, first of all? Hmm? There it is. Uncle Ben, Spider-Man. With great power comes great responsibility, right? <laughs> So look, we all agree that finance has the power, right? We can get to the answer. Nobody else can get to the answer like us. We all have the insight to tell the CEO where to steer the business. But we have this massive responsibility. And it's really twofold. First, we say it better be right. The numbers better be right. And by the way, you better get it done fast. Because yesterday's news doesn't steer the ship, right? We've been running the business on 12 points of data forever. Right? We close the books once a month. Why? Because that's as fast as we can do it. Right? Some companies report once a quarter. A daily close. Anybody here get a daily close? Soft close? SAP gets a soft close. Did you talk about that, Steve? We do a daily soft close. Anyway, it's, I mean, it's a moving target, and it's really, really hard to get to that real time. And then the other thing is the data has to be right. Why? Because of these guys. Compliance. Man, auditors, right? You better make sure those numbers are correct. And if you have silos of data all over your business, you have to reconcile every single one. You have to audit every single time you move the data. And there's a huge risk that if you're reporting data out of spreadsheets, that that data is wrong. There's a huge risk that you have a customer social security number on your laptop, and someone's going to get that and steal it. There's a huge risk that somebody inside the four walls is getting ready to quit, and they just downloaded all the CRM data which is, should trigger a warning, but maybe if you don't have the right tools, it's not. Right? There's a huge risk that I just went on a business trip to Newport News and I put my buddy on it, but my buddy's on vacation, so why is she adding that name to the list just because she ate too much at Nobu last night? Right? I should, there should be tools to capture how people are using the data. Right? And it's a very big responsibility, and it's on us in finance to make sure we understand how that data is being used. So massive, massive risks. So look, it's, at the end of the day, we know that we have this massive data explosion happening. We know that finance has the power to harness it and really be the, the stewards, if you will, to take the company to the true north that we're trying to achieve. But at the end of the day, making change is hard, right? And it's not really, I love this quote, it's not the oldest, most established companies that survive, 
but it's the ones that can really be adaptable to that change that will make it through, right? Anybody have a trio? Remember the trio? It was so cool with my little pen. I thought it was like life changing. And then Blackberries, like, gone, right? If we live and die by the phone, which I forgot to start my timer, so you guys have to tell me how long I'm going. So at the end of the day, finance really has the power to steer to the true north of the organization, right? And we have to understand strategically what we're looking at. And this is a great segue into the survey that I wanted to share with you because what really does a modern finance platform look like? What do we really need to do that's strategic to drive the business? And so the survey that was done by Strategic CFO surveyed um, CFOs to see what they thought modern finance looked like. And so when I started to look at some of these different elements, I said, well, let me kind of think about this in a different way. Which one of these are tactical, finance-focused um, opportunities versus more strategic business opportunities. So I, I tried to break it out, and this is kind of my opinion between tactical and strategic. And what was most interesting to me, it's probably hard to see the highlighting, because we have this beautiful sunlight coming in, but the first three are super tactical. Automation, I gotta put my stuff in the cloud, and I gotta integrate my plan and my actual and my forecast. Those are all really important tasks, especially getting to the cloud. But who do they really help? How many parts of the organization? Just finance, right? I'm automating for, finance, for finance's sake so that I can free up this accountant's time to be more strategic, which is great, but standing alone, it doesn't steer the ship towards our true north, right? So automation, this is 76% of the CFO says automation of resource and intensive ma manual tasks, sorry, let me click one more time, um, is a very critical element in modern finance. And so this reminds me of a story I had um, last couple weeks ago, I met with a CFO of a manufacturing company. And she's like, we just finished our ECC upgrade. That's right. Let that settle in. They just upgraded their ECC. Not to S4, but to like <coughs> ECC, whatever, six something. Is that the latest release of ECC? I don't even know. Anyway, she's like, don't talk to me about S4. I can't do it. I'm not ready. I need to put some bots on all my tasks and try to automate them. I said, well, that's great. You know, what, what's that going to get you? Well, you know, then I can free up that accountant's time to really be more value added. OK, well, who's that accountant going to add value to? Well, her peers, right? Other accountants. I said, okay, again, how does that get you to your true north? The strategy of the company is to grow through acquisition. By automating those clicks, does that really drive you to your true north? And she's like, well, maybe not. And so, look, automation is brilliant. But if you're renovating a house, you don't just wallpaper over a broken wall, right? You have to fix the bones. And then you also have to automate, right? So bots are wonderful, but if you don't fix the process first, and Steve spoke a lot about business process intelligence, and we have an opportunity now to test ourselves to see, you know, is this the right most optimized process? Or if not, tell me where I should fix it. So this fixing the bones isn't as hard as it used to be because we have a lot of tools that will help you. So that was the first one. So then I'll, I'll jump down to the third one here, which is, or the fourth one rather, which is really the first strategic one, which is 64% said one source of the truth is a critical element in modern finance. One source of the truth. What does that even mean? We've been talking about one source of the truth for 30 years, right? How many people think we have one source of the truth here? I, I didn't ask, I didn't survey the audience. Anybody here running, um, we're all SAP customers? Anyone not running SAP? You're not running SAP. Anybody running S4? One or two people. So S4 is our latest and greatest release. Um, ECC was the release before that. So I have to drink because I said an acronym. That was a game earlier. <laughs> Yes, a gentleman in the back spoke for an hour today and had six beers because he had way too many acronyms. <laughs> so look, one source of the truth is like the holy grail, right? We're always looking for one source of the truth. But getting there is just a problem that we've been searching for for so long. This doesn't happen overnight, guys. But if you don't ever start the journey, you're never going to get there. So I love this quote, too. For decades, most of us have been focused on the wrong problem. And this is how most finance and accounting, and I, I pick on finance accounting because that's my background, but I would gather that other departments, manufacturing, supply chain, HR, they look at the problem du jour, and they play whack-a-mole. Oh, let's get this one. Oh, let's buy a tool here, right? And they, and they go after, you know, I've got this process and I'm going to buy a tool. Oh, I got another process, I'm going to buy a tool. There was a company that spent, Fortune 10 company, a billion dollars on a big old Cloudera thing. What's a Cloudera platform service? Thank you, Mr. Technology Bob. 
A billion dollars they spent and said, let's throw all our data in there and then let's throw some data scientists on it to try to figure out what the data says. A billion dollars. And they didn't even have like a business problem. They just had data. They had zettabytes to figure out. Anyway, we tackle these. The average number of on-premise applications, 484. Could you imagine tying together 484 things? So SaaS is going to fix it, right? The average company has 110 SaaS apps. So in 2015, it was eight. It's grown in, what is that, six years? I can't do math. 110 into 2021. So this number is not going up faster than this number is going down, which is, again, creating a problem. So again, we've been trying to do this for 30 years, but we haven't been looking at it the right way. And at the end of the day, my friend Bob said, good projects get in the way of great progress. So thank you for that quote, because I think it's brilliant. So what does great progress look like? We know the data is not going away. The sand's going to continue to be in our shoes, right? But we need a better way to address it. And so with that SAP platform, we have a concept called a modern financial platform. So this is my first like deep dive slide here. So bear with me, because this is important. So if you think about the true north of the company, the target operating model and the vision and strategy that we're using to get there, you all have the power to help that happen, right? Because you're the stewards of data. You understand the information. But again, the office of the CFO has direct reports. They have a controller. They have a head of FP&A. They have a treasurer. They have maybe a chief risk officer, head of operations, AP, AR. But they played whack-a-mole. So they've got this tool over here and that tool over there. And then someone's trying to tie them all together. SAP says, let's do this differently, right? So our S4 HANA platform leverages this concept called a universal journal, right? It's a one place to post all your debits and credits. Why is that important? Because if I need to understand what my cash balances are so that I can understand if I have enough money to make an early payment and get a discount, I can do that if I have everything in a single source of the truth, right? If I have to wait till a batch runs, I can't do that. I can't figure that out. Um, I can't close the books in real time or in a soft close if I have to wait till the end of the month. So with this platform, I can run a P&L right off of SAP, right? SAP was never organized. Actually, no ERP was organized for reporting, hence why we played whack-a-mole and put in all these tools to make better reporting. So SAP built a better mousetrap with S4HANA because they put everything in a single place, and that enables finance to run on this modern financial platform. And it's underpinned by a couple key things. The Universal Journal I already spoke about. The other thing is security. Remember those guys knocking on the door to make sure the data was right? So we need real-time profitability. We need gr drill down to pr the lowest level for profitability. The data has to be real time. I get both of those through Universal Journal. And getting the data right with one source of the truth, I have continuous compliance happening right within the suite. So I can see as soon as Stephanie tries to cut a vendor, it stops me right away without having to bolt on a solution and run a process to see if any fraud or errors have happened. So controls, financial controls are embedded right within. So again, no other vendor has this. And it's how we drive our customers to success. And at the end of the day, when you invest in a solution, your customers need those solutions to be strategic, right? So an inconvenient truth, to really help your customers, your software investments must work across silos. Steve, this was your presentation. That's why BPI is so important. The CFO is part of the process, but they're not the beginning of the process, and they're not the end of the process. So if you make an investment in a technology, you have to think about the big picture, right? And so our intelligence suite with SAP does just that, right? So finance is, of course, because I'm in accounting, finance is in the middle. But if my peers in success factors were to do this, they'd have HR in the middle. But I think finance runs the world, so they're right here in the middle. Because um, they do, right? We are running the world. But people, customers, experiences, what we're spending, what we're shipping and selling, what we're building. It all has to work together in harmony with finance. And SAP's intelligence suite allows us to do just that. Um, the other thing that's really important here is technology. So we have data that's always going to sit outside. right? And the ability to let that data live where it needs to live and have analytics and planning that brings that together so that you can make sense of it is extremely important. Um, when SAP built this for themselves, right, we had to not only make it all work together, but it's not fit perfectly for running SAP's business, so we had to build extensions. Now, historically, and for those of you who run ECC today, Z code, right? Z trans, is that what they're called? Z codes? Z codes, right? You build them in the core, and then it makes it so you can't upgrade. That's a problem. So we say keep your core clean, 
and use the business technology platform to build your upgrades. Use the business technology platform to build things that you need. And that's inherent in bringing all this together. So SAP created this business technology platform. I haven't said the acronym once. You notice that, Steve. But I will. BTP. <laughs> Business technology platform was built by SAP to bring it all together and we said, heck, this is a really good opportunity. Let's introduce this to our customers so that they can develop what they need and they can make sure that they can bring all of these pieces together. So at the end of the day, as I said, there's really three things that drive modern finance. It's being able to drill down to that lowest level of detail without having to swivel the chair to 16 different applications. It's being able to have that single version of the truth, and it's being able to get real-time insights. Am I getting the... No, 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 no. Okay. You got five minutes. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm going to share just a few customer stories, and then we can no, all go no, get no, another please, drink. Please. So uh, I wanted to share just a story about SAP, because I talked about SAP investing in this platform. Um, I'm going to have to get a new story, because this is Luca. He's our global CFO, and he just announced he's retiring. So I'm going to have to update my story. But I love this story. Because Luca, in 2010, used to run his board meetings with pieces of paper. And he would say, OK, here's what we're doing. OK, here's this number. Hey, can you go do this query and tell me what this number is? And she'd run off, and she'd get all her friends, OK, we've got to find the answer. And they'd all run their BW reports as fast as they could, their S-base cubes. And, and two hours later, maybe they'd have an answer. But not really, because these five people came up with five different answers. So Luca was not a very happy CFO back then, because he didn't get the answers he needed in real time. So now, Luca runs this real-time dashboard. Actually, we've been using this for a while. And they run an interactive live reading. Right? Why is that important for SAP? Well, number one, when we were trying to make changes to our business model, we're trying to add more, buy companies, double down in certain market units, he can do that analysis doubling down in real time. Right? The other thing this is important for Luca is that it affords him more time to meet with folks like you. So one of my other favorite things about SAP is I get to bring customers like yourselves to SAP Shared Services Center so you can hear how SAP runs SAP. And Steve shared that story, and we'd love to bring CFOs to meet your CFOs to have that conversation. Um, and he's already shared some of these stats around some of the other benefits SAP has gotten. So like at the end of the day, this guy right here, he's on the journey. He's started. He's in the sand. He's making his way. He's scared. He doesn't want to change. He likes Excel. But he's going to get to the beach. He's going to swim. And you guys have to start the journey. And he was scared, but he had his friends. You have your friends. Other people have gone before you. Other people will come behind you. Stick together. Learn from each other. And achieve modern finance. Um, I was going to share a couple stories around Google, Home Depot, um, can I spend a couple more minutes? Do you guys want to hear some, a couple more customer stories? Salud. <laughs> SAP. <laughs> so um, I love this story because I, what, I've done, what I have done is I've got three stories, one kind of for each area. Because as I said, it's a journey. You're not going to get there overnight. No one turns on S4 and magically gets all this stuff. So part of what we want to do with our customers asked, her name was Ruth, Ruth, thank you, she was asked by the CEO, why did we miss? And she didn't quite know. She had a fairly good idea, but she had, and it sounds like you've worked with Google, right? Billions of dollars of, are you from just, Google? No. <laughs> their money machine. And, and, and they, um, they had a, you know, five billion record database in Oracle that they were using to turn calculations. And one of the reasons it was challenging to calculate the profitability are the cost incurred to run these sites, right? And so at the end of the day, they needed that granular level of profitability, and they implemented a tool called Profitability and Performance Management. And what that allowed them to do was take a calculation engine built in memory and calculate the costs and handle the transfer pricing as well, which is super complex and be able to really understand the true profitability, and they could do it much, much faster. In fact, 
Bob, I think you told the story about how they did a, um, a POC and they ran the calculations in like 10 minutes and the people watching were like, no, this took six hours to run. It's wrong. And they did it like five times before the people watching it actually believed that this tool could do what it was doing. So now they have a center of excellence established and there's a guy and I just imagine him like running around Google like, hey, what do you do? Can I use this tool with your project? And they, they like look for more projects to use the solution because it's been so fabulous. Um, so that's a really fun story because they started kind of with a very big problem and had drove a, a ton of value with this with this solution. Um, second customer is AT and T. Uh, this is a long time SAP billing customer, and their challenge was that they had 60 legacy billing solutions to send their bills to customers. Right? Remember? I mean, I think I had my first phone, my first black. No, it wasn't even BlackBerry. It was like the flip phone from AT and T. And then I paid my home phone bill to AT and T, and I got two separate bills from them. So their their bills were set up by product, not by customer. And so they had to basically create one voice for the customer, and they had to be to consolidate all that data so they understood if that customer was a credit risk. And so they, they implemented SAP billing for telecom. And not only did this materially reduce their DSO, it, they, it helped them with their bad debt, it empowered the staff so when someone called in, they could answer the question. So they you know, rolled this out to their thousands and thousands of call centers. And at the end of the day, this real-time insight gave them much better customer service. Right, so that was the benefit for them. And then this last one, um, the Home Depot, again, company clo much closer to my heart, um, not heart, but location physically in Atlanta because I live in St. Pete. I have a house though, so Home Depot is pretty close to my heart. I mean, we all spend a lot of money at Home Depot. Um, look, they grow through acquisition, so they had to choose between, I have this new company sitting on a non-SAP system, I'm gonna put it on ECC because that'll really help me. Well, what will it, Home Depot? So we convinced Home Depot a better strategy would be to put that new company on S4 and then use that as a target for other data coming from other ERPs. And so they use the same concept called central finance. They replicate their debits and credits. And now their phase one of their one finance program is real-time financial close. So they get all of their real-time reporting, profitability analysis, balance sheet, cash flow. And then here's the beauty, right? If they had put in an EPM, oh, darn it. <laughs> if they had put in a financial consolidation tool, like a Hyperion style tool, one stream tool, they would have they would have whacked them all. They would have got that real-time reporting. Boy, they sure helped that accountant. But what they wouldn't have done is created that foundation for future success, right? So that S4 platform now is a shared services environment, and their next phase is centralized payments. They can do centralized treasury, centralized collections, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it set them towards their true north, right? Their path for success. So at the end of the day, when you look at projects, you can never stop improving. You can never settle. Right, things are changing so fast. 2,000 zettabytes of sand, I mean of data. <laughs> Again, just massive, massive data explosion. And as the stewards of that data here in the room, you guys have the opportunity to keep the business from, from improving. And your success is what we care about. That's, I mean, we love to present with you. We wanna hear your stories. We wanna co-present and hear them and share them because it's a lot of fun. So I challenge you to learn something new. I know everyone's busy. Right? I gotta close the books, I gotta take my kid to dance practice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I ask you to at least hear us out. Check out our shiny, fancy round wheel. Don't settle for square wheels, in case you guys can't see that visual in the back. Um, <laughs> this is just a great picture of, of what we hear all the time. I don't have time, I don't have time. Make the time, make the time, because at the end of the day, um, you know, if you don't take that first step, you're never going to be like that little turtle getting out to sea. So thank you, everyone. Um, I really appreciate you listening. <laughs> Salud. <laughs>